Good morning and welcome to our daily service. It's the new week, but I guess for many of us, the days feel very much the same at the moment. And yet God's mercies are new every morning. And every morning it's good that we appreciate them and appropriate them afresh. So as we begin, let me lead us in a prayer. Let's pray. Father God, you are utterly faithful and unfailingly good and kind. Please will you help us now to lift our eyes to you. With the psalmist we pray, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we might sing for joy and be glad all our days. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In our daily services, we've been thinking about the Beatitudes that Jesus spoke at the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount. And this morning we're thinking about the sixth Beatitude, where Jesus says this, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. To help us think about those words, we're going to read a psalm. I love to start the morning with a psalm. So will you join with me in saying together Psalm 24? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob, Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? David asks. And his answer, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Now here again, those words of Jesus. He said, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. What does it mean, though, to have a pure heart? Would you describe your heart as pure? Jesus can't mean that our hearts are, are to be sinless. He's already said that we're to be those who are poor in spirit, who are deeply conscious of our spiritual bankruptcy. We're to be those who mourn our sin who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So we can't now be talking about those who've never sinned at all. So what might he mean when he speaks of the pure in heart? The heart in the Bible refers not simply to our feelings. It's a much bigger idea than that. It speaks, it's the place where we have our thoughts, where we make our decisions and choices. It's, it speaks of our longings and ambitions and desires. It's the, the, the real me, the me beneath the veneer I might present to others. Now remember, Jesus had some harsh words to say to the religious people of his day who cared a great deal about outward purity and cleanliness and yet who inwardly were filthy. He says they're like whitewashed tombs. He, he spoke of it as being hypocrisy. It's a hypocrisy, of course, 
of which we're all guilty. Our faith sometimes is, is simply outward performance, doing the right things. We, we honour God with our lips when our hearts are far from him. Other people look on the outward appearance and we love to impress them. But the Bible says God looks on the heart and he's not impressed by whitewashed tombs. He wants to see purity in heart. But is that possible? There's a verse in the book of Proverbs which says this, who can say I have kept my heart pure? If we're poor in spirit and mourn our sin, we will be deeply aware that there are many things in our life, in our hearts, that make us unclean. We know we need to be made clean. With David we pray, create in me a pure heart, O God. I don't have one naturally. I need you to cleanse me, to change me. In our psalm there, Psalm 24, David actually spoke of one who unquestionably could ascend the mountain of the Lord and stand in his holy place. It's the one he calls the King of Glory. The one we now know to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He had clean hands, perfectly clean hands and a perfectly clean heart. And of course, we now know he's not only risen, but he has ascended into heaven itself, into God's holy place. And because he has, the Bible says, we can too, if we cling, as it were, to his coattails, if we hide ourselves in him. And that is what our faith is to be, not mere outward performance, outward purity, but a heartfelt clinging to him and trusting in him. That word pure actually might have the sense of, of single-minded, wholehearted focus. We're to have an undivided heart that trusts him, that, that seeks to obey him. We're clean only because we've been made clean by trusting in the Lord Jesus. We know we need to be made clean because we're conscious that God sees our hearts. Well, as we turn now to prayer, we're going to begin by asking God to give us again that cleansing that we need. Mindful not of how others might see us, but mindful of how he, the Lord Almighty, sees us beneath the veneer, behind the mask. So join with me in praying these words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out all my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen. Through the prophet Ezekiel, God made this promise. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You will be my people and I will be your God. Thank you, Father, that that promise has been wonderfully fulfilled through the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross. Thank you that his blood perfectly cleanses and assures us of full forgiveness. Thank you for the new life 
we now have through your spirit. May he give us an undivided heart that fears you and trusts you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And we commit our days to you, Lord God. Whatever challenges and difficulties we face, please keep us trusting you and your grace. Grace which you've promised will always be sufficient. Please make us fruitful in every good work. Please give us strength to endure patiently and give us the contentment that's found as we rejoice in Christ. We pray too for our world where the needs seem so overwhelming. Please give to our leaders humility and wisdom. Bring comfort to the grieving and the anxious. And as idols fall, please turn the hearts of many back to you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing now. Remember Jesus' words, the pure in heart will one day see God. What an amazing prospect. One day to see God face to face. But even now, our, our vision, our focus is to be on him. And so we're going to sing, be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart.
Let me say a final prayer. Thank you, Father, for that wonderful prospect of heaven's joys, of one day seeing you face to face. But we ask today, as we live by faith, not by sight, that you would be our vision. Please help us to fix our eye on the Lord Jesus and through him, Grant us, please, your grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. God bless you all.